All right, you probably saw our video on the Femto Fox and our new solar build, but if you didn't, we'll leave a link to it in the video description below. But now it's time to put everything together. First, we'll start off with the enclosure. The enclosure we went with comes with this mounting hardware and two of these fittings to allow you to feed a wire into the enclosure and waterproof it. We'll need to drill a hole for this and the antenna connector, so let's go ahead and start off with the antenna connector hole. Grab the enclosure and have the metal buckles facing away from you. We'll want to drill a hole on the left side with a 5 8 drill bit. Measuring from the left side, we want to go about 2 inches. And if we look underneath here, we have these ridges and 2 inches is about dead center of these two ridges here. Measuring the ruler against these edges, we want to go down half an inch and mark our spot there, which will leave us enough room for the antenna connector and to screw on a cable. Now with the center of the hole marked, we can go ahead and drill the hole. Once that's done, I like to use this deburring tool to clean up the hole on each side, but you can use a knife if you don't have one of these on hand. Now we can move on to the NPT fittings that came with the enclosure. This will go on the right side, and if we measure 2 inches from the right and 3 quarters of an inch from the ridges or 1 inch from the bottom if you want to measure from there. For this hole, it looks like a 9 16 drill bit should do the trick. So we'll go ahead and drill out the hole there, and we'll use the deburring tool on this one as well. We can now go and insert the NPT into this hole and secure it into place like so. Now while we have the drill out, let's drill out the remaining three holes we need to do, which will be on the back of the solar panel, and we'll use a 15 64 drill bit for these. If you haven't already done so, the solar panel comes with a mounting bracket that gets mounted like you see here with it on the bottom center with the black box the wires coming out of should be on the left. To figure out where to drill these holes, the enclosure comes with these mounts and screws for them. So with the enclosure face down and the buckles facing away from you, screw two mounts on the side closest to you with the mounts facing you like so. Now on the top right side, screw the mount with it pointing to the right, as you can see here. We won't be using the fourth mount for this one. Now that we have the mounts on the enclosure laid on the top right corner of the back of the solar panel when you have it oriented like you see here, and use a marker to mark the holes for the center of each mount. Now I already drilled mine out, but you get the idea. Now you could mount the enclosure vertically instead of horizontally if you really wanted to, and it would fit just fine as well, but we went with mounting it on the bottom corner like this so that the entire closure is out of the sun during the middle of the day when things tend to be the hottest. And it's plenty sturdy with the three mounting points. Once those three holes are marked, grab the 15 64 bit and drill the holes out. Be careful not to hit the solar panel side after the hole drills through. You may want to put a piece of scrap wood or something under where you're drilling to be safe and not hit the solar panel. Now that we have the holes drilled, let's go ahead and put the kit together. If we look inside the enclosure, we have this mounting plate, which we'll need to remove by removing the two screws holding it in place. At least it should have two screws in your case. We just moved into a new home and mine apparently got lost during the move. Next, grab the larger of the two acrylic plates that come with the kit we offer, and then remove the protective film. The first thing we'll need to do is mount the solar power manager to this plate, and to do so, we'll need to figure out the proper orientation. Let's grab the mounting plate we took out of the enclosure, and if we look at it, there'll be a number on it. We want this number to be on the bottom right. Now grab the plate from our kit we were just working with and look where we have these notches on the sides for the screw holes. These should line up with the holes on the mounting plate that we took out of the enclosure. Now if we look at the center, we have these two sets of two holes right beside each other. And then if we follow the innermost holes, we have a hole directly across from it, which would make a square shape if we connected them together. This is where the WaveShare Solar Power Manager will be mounted, so let's go ahead and grab that now. The Solar Power Manager comes with these four standoffs and four screws, which we can go ahead and put together like so, ensuring that the screws are on the side with the green terminals. 
Now we want to place the solar manager on the acrylic plate from our kit with the USB-C port facing to the right, like so. Grab four of the smaller screws from our kit and use them to mount the solar power manager to the acrylic plate. Next, looking at the acrylic plate, we have these eight holes going around the outside here. Our kit comes with eight of these larger size standoffs and nuts for them, so let's go ahead and grab those out. Two of them will have a screw and spacer on them, but more on that later. Starting with the four holes on the side with the solar power manager, insert the standoff and secure the standoffs to the plate with the nuts until we have what we see here. Go ahead and snug them up, but don't over tighten them. Now let's grab those two standoffs with the screws and spacers. Those will go into the next two holes, so let's do the same for these and once those are on, we can do the same thing for the two remaining standoffs. When all is said and done, we should have what we see here. Now we need to mount this to the enclosure's mounting plate. If we look at the top left of the mounting plate, the leftmost hole of the top row of holes is where we want to put our first screw. We should have four long screws remaining in the kit, along with four spacers. Grab a screw and a spacer, and looking to the left of the solar power manager, we have two holes left there. Put one of the screws through the top hole like so. Then on the other side, put a spacer through the screw and hold them together with your fingers. Now go ahead and put the screw into the hole on the top left of the enclosure plate we were just looking at. And go ahead and start to screw it in with a screwdriver, but don't tighten it all the way just yet as we need to be able to move things around for now. Grab another screw and spacer and do the same thing for the bottom hole. Swing the plate around and line it up with the hole on the same row of columns of holes as the one we just screwed on. Again, don't tighten it just yet. On the opposite side of the acrylic plate, we have two remaining holes that we need to go through the same process with. These last two can be a bit tricky, so what I like to do is put both of the screws through the holes, use my fingers to hold the screws in place, put the spacers on the screws, then flip it over and get the screws into position, then flip it back over and start to screw them in. Once those are on and everything looks like we see here, we can go ahead and tighten everything down. While we have everything easy to get to, let's connect the USB-C power cable. Go ahead and grab the USB-C power cable with the bare wires that's included in our kit. This will connect to the green terminal on the solar power manager labeled GND and 5V which is our ground and 5 volt connection. Go ahead and loosen the screws for this terminal a little to allow us to put in the wires. The red wire will go into the 5 volt side and the black wire will go on the ground side. With those in place, make sure there's little to no bare wire showing and that they're not touching. If everything looks good, we can go ahead and tighten the terminal screws to secure the wires into place. With all of this secured to the enclosure mounting plate, we can go ahead and mount this back into the enclosure, making sure the side with the numbers is on the side with the holes we drilled. With the buckles facing away from us, we just want to screw in the left side for now. We'll mount the Femto Fox to this here in a bit, but first let's hook up the solar panel wire to the solar power manager while things are still easy to get to. Now the wire coming from the solar panel is a bit long, so you may want to trim it down. Or if you think you may use the solar panel for another project down the road, you can roll up the excess wire and tuck it behind the solar panel like you see here. We want to feed this wire through the NPT fitting we mounted earlier. Now it's a tight fit, but if it isn't going through at all, then the sealing nut may be too tight and needs to be loosened. Once the wire is in, it'll need to go into the green terminal on the top right of the solar power manager. That terminal is labeled N positive and N negative. Before we connect the wires, you may want to make sure we're doing this indoors where the solar panel isn't getting sun. Now let's loosen the terminals to allow the wires to go in. The wires used by the solar panel are a bit big, so we may have to trim some strands of wire off to get them to fit into the terminal like I did here. Once those wires are in place, ensure there's little to no bare wire showing and that the wires aren't touching. Now with that in place, we can now mount the antenna connector into the remaining hole. Remove the nut and washers from it, insert it into the hole from the inside of the enclosure, 
and then we can go and put the washers back on and hold it into place with the nut, but don't tighten it just yet. We're now ready to install the Femtofox, so let's go ahead and grab that. Unscrew the screws from the standoffs that have the spacers on them and hold on to them. Put the Femtofox into position by lining the holes up with the four standoffs and make sure that the Ethernet port and USB-C port are facing to the right. The hole where the Ethernet port is is a bit tight and can be hard to reach, so let's do that one first. And what I like to do is grab one of the small screws from the kit, put it through the hole and hold it into place with the screwdriver, and then line everything up and go ahead and screw that one into place. Then grab the other screw and secure the location below that one. Now we can go and connect the antenna connector to the Femtofox. Grab the cable coming from that and connect it to the antenna connector on the radio of the Femtofox. You may have to rotate the antenna connector to get the orientation right to be able to connect it, which is why we didn't completely tighten it earlier. Once we get that connected, we need the remaining screws, spacers, and the small acrylic piece from the kit, which we can go ahead and remove the protective film on. Go ahead and place one of the spacers over the mounting hole for the Femtofox. Now put the screw through the hole of one of the holes on the small acrylic piece, and put that through the spacer and into the mounting hole and start screwing it in, but don't tighten it. Now do the same thing on the other side and go ahead and tighten both of them down. These antenna connectors are finicky and can sometimes come loose and this part ensures that it stays in place. We can now go and insert the batteries into the battery holder, making sure we put them in the correct polarity. We can now plug in the battery holder into the white connector port on the left side of the solar power manager. Next, grab the remaining acrylic plate from the kit and the Velcro strap. Loosely put the strap around the acrylic plate like so, then line it up with the last four standoffs and have the square holes line up with the green terminals. Now go ahead and secure the two right screws into place, open the Velcro strap, lay the battery holder down, and then secure the plate with the remaining two screws on the left side. Then shift the battery holder to the left where it sits against the two screws on the right so that the LED lights on the solar power manager are visible. Then go ahead and secure the battery holder into place with the Velcro strap. And that's everything that needs to be done with the enclosure and its contents. We're now ready to mount it to the back of the solar panel. Now our kit includes a hardware pack with nuts and bolts for mounting to the solar panel. So let's go ahead and grab that. Now once the enclosure is mounted, it can be hard to reach this corner side, so we'll start there. Set the enclosure sideways with the mount still over its intended hole so we can easily access it. Grab the nut and slide it over to the hole until it's lined up. Then go ahead and put the bolt through and start hand tightening, but leave it loose enough so we can move things around. Now swing the enclosure and line up the other mounts to the intended holes and mount the nuts and bolts the same way. We'll now want to tighten everything up with a 10 millimeter wrench and an Allen wrench. This part can be tricky, but it helps if you set the solar panel on its side like this. And I like to go ahead and put the Allen wrench on the bolt so it's ready, and then reach down to the nut with the 10 millimeter wrench, hold it into place, and then start tightening with the Allen wrench. And do the same thing for the remaining nuts and bolts. Once that's done, we're all mounted and good to go. Now there's one final thing we need to do before mounting this outside, and that's getting the SD card flashed for the LuckFox and installed on the FemtoFox board. Since this video is already going to be pretty long, we'll be doing that in a separate video, which I'll link to in the video description of this one. And once the flashing process is done and the LuckFox is ready to go, it just gets inserted on top of the FemtoFox board like so. And if you decided on using Wi-Fi with the Wi-Fi adapter we linked in the previous video, our kit also includes an angle USB-C adapter to make it fit into the enclosure. So we can go and insert that into the LuckFox board as well. All right, let's go ahead and get this mounted outside. 
Now, as mentioned earlier, we just moved, so I've not had a chance to install any antenna mass anywhere yet. So for this video, I'm just mounting to this tripod for now, which I actually really like for the price, and you'll probably be seeing more of it on this channel. So for mounting to a pole or antenna mass, the solar panel mount for the solar panel we're using comes with this hose clamp for mounting, but it's limited in how much it can be tightened. So unless you're mounting to a larger diameter pole, you'll need to use something else. And that's the case here with our tripod mount and most antenna masts. So we're using this U-bolt clamp here to mount it like you see here. Once that's mounted, we simply mount the antenna to the top of the mast after connecting the cable to it. Then we go and connect the other end of the antenna cable to the antenna connector on the enclosure. And after that, we're all set to power it on. Lift up the right side, being careful to use the plate that comes with the enclosure or the acrylic plate from our kit. Once we have that lifted up, we can now fit in the USB-C cable. That should get everything powered on and we can go ahead and secure the mounting plate to the enclosure. And with that, everything should now be up and running. And if you're using Wi-Fi, it should make the connection back to the configured Wi-Fi connection where we can then control the FemtoFox remotely. If you'd like to set up a FemtoFox like this for yourself, there'll be links to the FemtoFox and everything needed in the video description below. But that'll do it for this video and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so you won't miss out on any of our future content. Thank you all and have a good one.